Amen. Will you turn your Bibles to John chapter 8? John chapter 8 in verse 12. And today I want to speak to you briefly about leading and perception. Leading and perception. Leading and perception. Yeah, John chapter 8 verse 22. The Bible says, Then spake Jesus again to them, saying, I am the light of the world, and he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Take note of what he said. He said, the one that follows me shall have the light of life. If, if, see, it's not something that he will be asking for. Direction will come and be resident in him. So, a child of God does not look outside for direction. Direction is within him. Why? Look at the scripture again. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world, and he that followeth me shall not work in darkness. Either it's about marriage, either it's about a job, either it's about finances. It says, you will not be doing a guesswork. It says, you will not walk in darkness. He says, why will he not walk in darkness? Not because he's praying for something. The Bible says, because he shall have, he shall have the light of life. So when people say that I'm struggling to hear the voice of the Lord, what is the first step of this? The first step to discerning, so there are two things I said. There's leading and there's guidance. Leading is what God does for you. So I said leading and perception. Leading is what God does for you. Perception is what you receive. And I want it to soak. Leading is what God does for you. Perception is what you receive. I'll give an example of what that means. So, leading is the work of the spirit. So, when the Bible says you have the light of life, that is the work of leading. So, I give an example. Let's use a very practical example. Let's say that um, you are trying to pick up radio signals. And when you pick up radio signals on your, on your, on your gadget, on your gadget, it's not working so well. Where is the problem? Is it with the sender or with the receiver? Most of the time, it's going to be what? With the receiver, maybe your location or something. So, there are two dimensions to divine guidance. There's a part of divine guidance that is leading, which is what the Spirit of God is doing. But there's a part of divine guidance that is what? Perception. So, let me tell you. So, when there's an error in guidance, please take note of it. This is very deep. This is very deep. When there's an error in guidance, most people think maybe God did not speak to them. Most of the time, the leading is accurate, but the perception is distorted. Do you know sometimes you can watch a movie on different gadgets and they will show in different ways? It's not because the movie has changed, but the receptor that is showing that thing differs. So, when you see something breaking on YouTube, duh, 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 that's not the way the person is talking. But there's breaking because of the speed of the internet available to you at that time. That's the work of perception. So, sometimes when people make mistakes, it's a perception issue. I'm telling you the truth. When they make mistakes, it's not as if they didn't hear God, but they, they, they did not receive the accurate perception. This is very powerful. That's why you hear someone say, but God said, I should mind him. Why did he scatter? You heard, but did you perceive? When God said, but God said, I should take this job. What did you, there was something you hear. And I'm going to show you something that even though God speaks, perception is a function of knowledge and revelation that you have so once you don't have enough knowledge and revelation you will hear in the dark and that's why the when the bible says that um bible says we um bible says um we we, we hear a little you say hear a little there a little if you don't understand the scripture very well it could almost mean to you that god is speaking small small listen to me god does not speak small small as a matter of fact god does not even speak god has spoken God has spoken. So how come I'm discerning the will of God small, small? You discern based on the level of illumination you have per time. You discern based on the level of illumination you have per time. So what is seem as if God is saying small here and saying small here and saying small here is not God is saying that. That is why your mind and your spirit is able to receive it. Glory to God. So I wanted to notice this. So what's the first step to hearing the voice of God? The first step is this, is believing that you can hear the voice of God. That's the first step. The reason why is that every spiritual thing works by believing. The first step to hearing the voice of God is you believing I can hear. 
It says, my sheep. So when you keep saying that, I don't hear the voice of God, you are making a statement that renders your faith useless. You need to know. It says, my sheep, it says, my sheep hears my voice and they know me. One of the things you should begin to say that hearing the voice of God is easy for me. I know the voice of God. I'm guided by the Spirit of God. Why are you saying that? The Bible says that but, but our faith becomes operational by the acknowledging of every good thing on the inside of us. That means that spiritual things come to reality if you give a voice to it. How does that mean? The moment you begin to vocalize that I can hear the voice of God. So let's say you're in between a career decision and you don't seem to know what to do. Say, Father, thank you because I know what to do because I've heard your voice. Listen to what the Bible says. Let's go back to the scripture. I want to show you. So, so the voice of God, because most of you think the voice of God is something outside you. The voice of God is within you. Go back to the scripture. John chapter 10. Verse, John chapter 8 verse 12. Um, sorry, John chapter 8 verse 12. Let's go back to the scripture. John chapter 8 verse 12. The voice of God is within you. See what the Bible says. The Bible says, And Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. And he that followeth me will not work in darkness. Why? But shall have. He shall have the light of life. He didn't say he will go to the light of life. He said the light of life is inside him. What does that mean? Illumination or direction is not outside you, it's inside. Stop waiting for direction from the outside. Look on the inside. So the first thing is just to know and to believe that and say, you know what? So the first thing is to know that, hey, number one, the light of life is within me. Then number two, the light of life is within me. Number two, you know, I mean, just, I mean, just yesterday, I was just reflecting on some things about the conference and um, just some of the issues we had at Wembley. I just had a very big unrest about the programming and all of those kind of things. So, you know, in the morning yesterday, I called up Pastor Dario and I'm like, you know, I want us to discuss some of these things. And some of the things that I thought I'd known, I did not know because they were, I mean, all these regulations in the UK that I'm not practically aware of. And I'm like, oh, I did not know this. And Pastor said, oh, I had mentioned to you. But the question is that, how did I know I did not know what I did not know? The light of life. The light of life. Someone says, you just know that I can marry him. It's not about his haircut or his job. You just know I cannot. Someone says, why? You just say, I can't. Why? Light has shine, has shone in your face. I'm telling you, light has shone. You just know. You know, someone says that, um, you know, I'm going to migrate. I said, I cannot migrate. Because there's no light there. And some of you, you need to know that there are certain relationships you must stay in, no matter how much it, it troubles you. If Lot was wise, when Abraham told him, pack your load, you are so rich, move to that side, he would have said, who am I? Where did I come from? Before I met you. Lot did not understand that he was not the blessed one. That his blessing was an extension of his connection to Abraham. He didn't understand that. So, he thought he was wise, you know, and he was very smart. He was an economist. He looked at the land. He, he saw the prediction. He, the Bible says that, the Bible says the land of Solomon and Gomorrah was like the garden of Eden before the Lord destroyed it. It was such prosperous. It looked so fertile. So, he moved there. It, to the natural eye, it looked like a beautiful land. But it was a, mark that God, it's a land that God had marked for destruction. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. This is so powerful. This is so powerful. He said, he said, he that walk in the light, he said, you shall have the light of life. Let's turn to Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23. I want to show you why guidance is very important. See what the Bible says here. Oh Lord, I know, th I know that the way of a man is not in himself. Did you see that? It says, except God gives you direction and puts it inside your spirit. 
he said the way of a man is not in himself this is why you must look inside for a deeper dimension of direction and the reason i'm saying so is that please pay attention some things you are praying for is just one direction away that's why jesus christ jesus's mother told them when they wanted listen to me especially of you that are praying for career miracles business miracles marital miracles all those miracles when i read the bible they always come with instructions i'm telling you the truth all those miracles always come with instructions they were going to turn water into water into wine jesus when that said whatever i says to you to do because those miracles remember it's called the working of miracles so most of those things come with instruction there's something you have to do but the question is that if you're not able to discern what god is saying then how do you know what you have to do so the jeremiah, jeremiah tells us here he said that i know the i know the way of the man is not in himself it is not in man to direct his path or his steps and this why direction is very powerful this why direction is extremely powerful this is why it's powerful let's open another scripture quickly let's open another scripture quickly oh this is very powerful so we've done to Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 23 John 8 verse 12 Job chapter 32 verse 8 Job chapter 32 verse 8 someone say hallelujah so how do you receive this direction the first thing is that you have to know that you have the right to direction the second thing that you have to believe that you have the capacity so what you believe you don't need to go to a prophet you don't need to go to someone to hear god for you i have the capacity to hear god listen to me god does not have grandchildren we're all sons and daughters so god can speak everyone has a right to be led by the spirit of god job chapter 32 verse 8 it says there's a spirit in man and the inspiration i want to show you and the inspiration of the almighty give it them understanding so let me say this quickly here man was not designed to live by himself man was designed to be dependent on god man was designed to be led by god man was designed to be influenced by god and that's why both demonic spirit and holy spirit seek for one thing in man to influence him the sub work of demonic spirit is influence the sub work of the holy spirit is influence but the question you want to ask yourself is that whose influence am I submitting myself to? The sum work of the Holy Spirit is influence. The sum work of demonic spirit is influence. Glory to God. I said glory to, to God. So the primary activity of spirit, both evil and Holy Spirit, is to gain control of a person's heart. So let's look at some scriptures that will help us further. Um, Matthew chapter 6 verse 23. And I want to now begin to talk. So, I've, so leading is what the Lord does. So we are being led by the Lord. Leading is what the Lord does. So I mean if you, if you go to YouTube. You can, I've done a lot of teaching on how to be led by the Holy Spirit. And I spoke about what the Lord does in leading. So how are you, how are you led by the Holy Spirit? There are different ways you can be led by the Holy Spirit. Number one, you can be led by the Holy Spirit by the inner voice. Number two, you can be led by the Holy Spirit by the voice of the Spirit itself. You can be led by the Holy Spirit by the inward weakness. What is the so the primary way we're led by the Spirit is not a voice, it's a weakness. Romans chapter 8 says this, and that's the problem with Christians because Christians say, What did you hear? The primary way we are led is not what by hearing, it's a weakness. A weakness is an attestation. The best way to describe a weakness is that scanning machine you go through when you go through the airport. You know the thing a weakness so when you go to the scanning machine and you carry objects that are not right it will beep but when you carry if you're not carrying any object it's go so the weakness is that you have to pass something through it the weakness is a subjective work of the holy spirit what do i mean if you don't pass decisions to your spirit you might not be able to tell either is a weakness or is what either is attesting or is rejecting it and that's why you have done something for a long time then you say ah maybe i should even pray about it and you now feel a certain way and the reason why you've not felt that way before is because you've not passed that decision through the litmus test of the spirit 
Glory to God. I said glory to God. I mean, we, we have kids and I was praying about, you know, we're thinking of, you know, how our kids will school and how they will move abroad and all of those. No, not move abroad. The boarding school they will go to, they will do this. Even it could be moving abroad. And as I was praying, but I just really wanted the Lord to lead me. I, I had a lot of spiritual experience in my boarding school. But I mean, my path is not my child's path. And that's the truth. My child is not my path. Child, you know, as great as my path is, it's not my child's path. So as I was praying, you know, I just prayed about it. And I'm like, Lord, just guide me. It's not like a serious, intense prayer because God already speaks to me anyway. So just tell me what you want to do. I, you know, and um, one of my, I just had a friend that has a church 10 minutes from our church drive, 5 or 10 minutes. And um, he's older. He's about 60 years old. And I went to sit down with him and we're just talking. Just He's an older person. Just talking about life. Then he just moved. He said, ah, I can never send my children to boarding school. I said, I, I said why? He said, ah. So he gave me the revelation he had, the scripture. He began to tell me, tell me, tell me. Ah. And as soon as he just finished, bam, he just said, hey, why did I even say that? I don't know. And he just continued. Let me tell you something there. When they say God wants to speak, he will just make you be in the right conversation. Yeah. So that you can see that your wisdom of foolishness. The pastor will just leave everything and address your issue and go back. And you will not understand that that, that was the voice you were waiting for. Glory to God. You know what I said when I said that? I said, ah, there, there's no, I, to, I understand what you said, so don't worry. The person you have spoken to has heard. Till tomorrow, he never knows that he addressed an issue. But the issue he addressed with me, I know myself. And the reason I'm saying so is that, let me say something to you quickly. All of you here, the, the level of community is lower in this country. And you guys have to make decisions per time about yourself, about your relationship, your children per time. And you must learn. One of the biggest gifts is to help you know how to trust that leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. So that you can make better decisions and have a better quality of life. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So leading is what God does. So leading is what God does. Perception is how we, is the process of we recognizing the guidance, the leaders, the leading and the direction of the Holy Spirit. That's what perception is. Let's read some scriptures I will show. So what affects perception? Hmm. Matthew chapter 6 verse 23. And I want to really beg you, value the word of God. Value the word of God. Of course, a lot of you love to pray. And when we say increase the intensity of prayer, people increase the volume. It's a useless activity. The intensity of prayer does not result in volume or in activity. The intensity of prayer is increased by the authority of the word of God. Because the authority of prayer is derived from the Bible. That's what the Bible says. If you pray according to my will, my will is not something spooky. The will of God is the word. Some of you have lost your parents here. They left you a will. The will is not in your head. It's a document. So when it says, if you pray according to my will, the will is what? A document. And there's nothing praying from a place of certainty. Let, let, let me, share. can I say, one of the ways, pay attention now, one of the ways you will know your entire life that your prayer has been answered is that you are certain when you leave the place of prayer. I'm telling you, you will be so certain that it's done. How do you know it's done? It's just done. Nothing has changed the physical. The reason why is that when, is, when you're certain, what has happened is this. This is, how, this is how the Bible calls it. That it comes to a place where the day star arises out of your heart. There's just that conv conviction and that's where faith is. Because faith itself is conviction. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. So Mark chapter 6 verse 23. The Bible says, if your body, now this is, we're not talking, we're talking about leading, we won't talk about perception now. It says, if your body, if thy eye be evil, and thy, it said, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore there is light in thee, if therefore 
the light that is in thee shall be darkness how great is that darkness what he's saying here is this very powerful he said if per, se- if per chance you have revelation but fundamentally your mindset is darkened he said the darkness in your mind will, will affect your revelation so most of us and I'm, I'm saying this because this is the reason why you have to have light it's not as if we don't hear the voice of god but our interpretation comes from a very negative place so the leading is accurate but the perception you know perception is let me give what perception is you know i can look at my wife and be like oh wow she looks happy i hope you know that it's not about her it's my perception of how she looks she's sending a particular signal out and my perception is that she looks what she looks happy you want to flip that through me so that i can see it's gone off so i can be like she looks happy and you know sometimes i will think she's happy and i'm like what is making you happy i'm like no nothing i'm just okay and that means that my perception of what is reality is what wrong But the question is, is, but this is the question. How do you make your perception accurate? And that's why, you know, when it comes to all of these pastors that prophesy election results and all of those kind of things, there are many, there are many cases to it. Let me tell you, I will tell you what happens. Number one, some people are false prophets. Yeah. But guess what? Saying a prophecy that did not happen doesn't make you a false prophet. Because even a good prophet can get it wrong. Someone say, how do you know? Look at First Corinthians. The Bible says when people prophesy, let them be by two or three and let them judge the prophecy. Why should you judge the prophecy? He said, Did you judge the prophecy because the, prof- the person that prophesy has a tendency to miss it? The Bible says people should judge prophecy. So the person that prophesy has a tendency to miss it. That's why it says you judge prophecy. So if they are false prophets, that means that is it judge prophet false prophets? No, that's not the response of false prophets. So there can be false prophets that come that people miss it. But why do people miss it? People miss it for a lot of reasons. Number one, they're emotionally attached. So, and when they're emotionally attached, it affects their perception. That was why Balaam kept on saying, God said I should go. Are you listening to me? You remember the story of Balaam and Balak? Yeah. They said, God said I should go. God did not tell him to go anywhere. He said, God should, how do I know? How can God say you should go and an angel will stop you? The angel has not been born. So for him, because God and his angel don't work at variance. So for an angel to draw a sword, listen, the angel was so upset, he drew a sword in his pathway. How can God say you should go and an angel draws a sword in your pathway? But the reason why he went was because he heard himself. His perception of what he heard was that he should go. Was that what God was saying? No. There's a level you like someone, you will pray. And you will hear yes. You even dream. You would dream in your dream. You're like, Pastor, you will not believe. It. He came to me and gave me a ring, and I, I and in the ring, I, I was I was still resisting that I'm not sure it's the will of God. And I saw an angel of the Lord, Paul, six feet, with a sword pointed onto heaven, and the angel said, "My daughter, what are you waiting for? Receive that which I'm giving to you." Praise God. But all of you, what you've said, all of what you've said is just your personal perception. What affects perception? Emotions. Circumstances. So, and that's why I tell people, when you're hurt, when you're going to a tough moment and transition, don't make sudden decisions. Because your emotions are not balanced to be able to know what God is saying. Because look at the scripture. It says, if your body be full of darkness, it says, how dark are you? It says, the light in you itself becomes what? Darkness. Let, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give examples of perception. In the book of Acts chapter 10, so Peter had a vision and he saw food coming down from him and he heard a voice and say, kill and eat. And he said, ah, sir, I cannot kill and eat. I cannot eat what is unclean. And they took the sheet back into heaven. Then the sheet came back. 
kill and eat. He says, I cannot kill what is unclean. I cannot eat what is unclean. The third time. And the voice kept on saying that whatsoever God says is clean, you cannot say is what unclean. You know when the finish, vision finished, he didn't know what God was talking about. Left to Peter, he thought it was food. So he was thinking about food. But instantly, perception came. Instantly, more revelation came. What's revelation? Peter, certain men await you from Cornelius. Go and meet them without questioning. Then he understood that the revelation I saw is connected to the Gentiles. The, it was the Gentiles. But if you had seen it today, you said they are chasing me in my dream. That demons want to feed me my dreams. So, and guess what? The moment your perception is wrong, your behavior will be wrong. The moment your behavior is wrong, your, your results will be wrong. This is power of perception. So, the food they saw were actually poopy. They were Gentiles. What he saw was Gentile. Perception. But the only reason why he understood they were people was because he had more light. Because the voice of the Lord came to him. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Look at the, look at the wise men. They saw a star. They saw a star. Well, I don't have time to explain what the star saw. What they saw. Because it was not a star they saw. It was an angel. Because sometimes angels are described as stars. Bright and morning star. It was the description of an angel. So they saw a star. But if you notice something, as the star was leading them, they went into Herod's house. Because the assumption is that this star, if it came to Jerusalem, it was here. The king would be born in the house of the king. So they went there. And as soon as they went there, the guidance of the angel disappeared. The way you know it was not a star they saw was this. When they went back, the Bible says the star appeared. Was he a shooting and lighting star? And the star began to move. Do you see star moving geographically? The Bible says the star moved until they stayed over where Jesus was born. But question, why did they find themselves going to the house of Herod? Perception. Perception is that if a king is born here, then he must be born in the house of the king. You see the problem? The problem is that, so there's a way you are interpreting what God is saying because of preconceived theology, philosophy, beliefs, and current emotions. So the thing is that some of you, it's not as if God is not speaking to you. But there, and that's why you need to get to a, ch a great church like this where the word of God is taught. What it does for you is that it makes the light inside stronger. And when the light is inside stronger, your perception becomes more accurate. Because sometimes there are many voices. There are many voices. Like, oh, wow, 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 wow. I didn't see that. I mean, we had a great service yesterday. I could come here today and start another impartation service, which I could do. But by the time I finished the impartation and the, all of that, do, will you have grown in light? So every time I come for a meeting, I always try to teach. You know why? The move of the Spirit will come and bless you, but the teachings will stay with you. Because powerful teachings have a way of shifting mindsets, bringing faith, and expanding your hope capacity. So much so that days after the meeting, you keep saying that Base, I mean, look at what that guy said. What he says, first the corn, first the blade, then the air, and the full corn. He didn't even say it very well, but he got the concept. If I heard me teach before, I've explained to you how the kingdom of God works. And I said, these are the kingdom of God. The Bible says, it's like if a man planted a seed. He said, when the seed is growing, it will be first the blade, then the air, and the full corn. What does that mean? These are the progress, this is the progression of God's power. When you are praying about something, you see the air. The air is the part of a plant of a seed that you plant. You just see a leaf. It tells you that the seed is growing, but doesn't mean that you have a fruit. Then you see what? The blade. The blade means that there's an advancement, but you still don't have a miracle. Then you now see the full corn. The full corn is that the miracle is here. And what I'm saying is that here you are, you are praying for, you have been praying for this approval. And they've never gotten back to you in the last one year. 
after the prayer you now hear they say that please send us an extra document what you have seen is the blade it's not a testimony in itself but it means that the power of god has begun to work you know what i'm saying so when you get the test when you get that kind of email instead of you going into depression and be like oh god where are you that's the wrong thing you're going to thanksgiving and say father i can see that at least my fund is open the way we destroy the process is this this will destroy the process when we see the blade of the first con what we do we begin to complain and through murmuring and complain we, we triangulate the process you've been praying for someone to marry you all of a sudden you get to this office and this guy that you're not interested in because it's not exactly what you want says baby baby <laughs> and you go <laughs> what nonsense I totally agree with you that's what nonsense but over the last 18 months no person has asked you out but this one has said baby baby what you should go to god in prayer is a father i thank you because at least you have brought the blade then the air will come then the full hair will blow up are you here don't complain about what you should praise about stop complaining about what you should what praise about i'll give you a personal story and i always share this when i say this story my, my sister she went moved to the u.s from dubai my older sister moved to the u.s from dubai and when she got to dubai and when she moved to the dubai to the from dubai to the u.s when she got to she went during covid so she finished her master's but they could not employ her her visa was at stake she couldn't get a job she she applied everywhere they didn't even respond to her so she called me and said i need them i need deliverance that the uh, village people are following me i said my sister you're my sister now if you need deliverance i will know that there's a demon following you right now he said no he said that, I, I, that you think you're not taking my kids serious because i'm your sister you are not taking you say you're praying for other people you're not taking me serious i said if you have ah, with this spiritual eye i should be able to see that something has, is happening to you the lady in yellow it's not a yellow yeah you wearing glasses stand come come mm. the spirit of god says to you you know it says to you your first time here oh you, you come okay the spirit of god says to you, the spirit of god says to you it's not the it's not the work of the enemy it's just process is it just process and this phase will pass and the next phase will come so don't open the thought to satan by thinking that this is the work of satan the reason was that the moment you start thinking that way then the work of satan will begin you know what i'm talking about right huh you do yes yeah so it's not the enemy just process praise god hallelujah so how did i see that as i spoke about my sister i just in a in a just in a two seconds vision because visions come like flashes sometimes they're different kind of vision just like that i'm like wow so i could see the anointing on her and i could tell in an instant what happened but those things are not for pastors it's for everyone throughout 228 says in the last days i would i would you know yeah I would it's just to turn it on and be like you know i'm going to develop myself here so back to my sister so my sister said that um they were and, and i said okay you know what let's pray so we prayed over the over the phone we prayed and in the next two months or one month about she got five responses like for the next stage of interview not jobs next stage of interview then the next two or three months she didn't hear from anybody again then she called me back. He said, I told you that this is a demonic case. I, me, I'm telling you that this is a demonic case. And I said to her, you've been applying for one and a half years. Nobody responded to you. We prayed. In one month, two months, you got five responses. Because you did the interview and you didn't get back to you, it's a demonic case. I said, why can't you say that God has started something? See if you say so. I said, well, he has started. I said, what we're going to do right now is to go and thank him. He said, first the blade. Then the air and the full corn. Let's go ahead and thank him. We went to thank him. As we began to thank him, guess what happened? 
Just a few weeks after, one of the company contacted her. She got a job, eight dollars in six figures. They paid her almost twenty thousand dollars for relocation from the state she was. Just relocating within the state, from one state to another state. Just relocating. So, but the thing is, it's the thing about perception. So when you know, when you don't perceive well, you will not even realize that what was meant to, what was, what is discouraging you is meant to what encourage you. For example, now. A lot of you feel frustrated and the reason why the frustration is there is that God is hoping that you will use the energy of frustration to push in the realm of the spirit and have a breakthrough but right now you are allowing your frustration to depress you glory to God I'm telling you so the financial frustration you feel has a divine undertone to it but you're not, you're, not, you're not saying what is going on. Not, no, 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 no. What it should propel you to that? You're now getting into a place of faith, of the word, physical things you must do because there's a transition that must happen. Are you here? This is very symbolic for all of us. Sometimes your biggest blessing is, if, is your frustration. But I hope you can hear what he's saying. What is not say, what is not saying is depression. What is saying that travail? That travail. Even the person that will give birth will also have pain. But the pain is different. It's a pain to what? Travail. But it's perception that helps you differentiate the working of the spirit per time. So there is a leading of the spirit and there's a perception. And what really helps you with perception is to have light because so what distorts perception is your emotion so when you're in an emotional state you are you you go in a very and that was why before god spoke to elijah he took him through this say what did you see is it fire this and this he wanted to balance his emotion so that he could hear rightly praise god stand on your feet let us pray the lady in glasses i, I just want to let you know i see some kind of heaviness I don't know what it is but the bible says that he gives us joy for mourning and that's what i'm praying for you that come come he gives us joy for mourning what's going on i, I just see heaviness Just like that so what do you think you've lost you don't know you feel as if you lost everything you've lost something significant but what have you lost that God cannot replace has it gone so that a better one will come so if you know that hold on to that and Lord will thank you for your daughter we just receive for you it's of heaviness joy in the name of the lord jesus christ go ahead lift up your hands and thank him everyone bless his holy name 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 father we worship you father we praise you father we honor you there's no one like you oh god oh god there's no one like you in all the earth there is no one like you in all the earth there's no one like you in all the earth no one like you in all the earth. No one like you in all the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Does anybody have any kind of special needs today? You know, you, you came here, you have you're in terrible states. Maybe your health, maybe something. The reason why is that we have the authority of the spirit to change things. Yeah. And I'm sent. I'm really sent. Like I'm sent. Yeah, I'm really sent. So when I when I'm sent, there's no there's nothing the authority I carry cannot change. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's nothing it cannot change. Yeah, because I'm sent. It's not even about Dari, where's your wife? Where? She's here? Call her to come. She's with the kids at the back. Is she in this auditorium right now? Hey, tell her to come. 
Come with her. So if one wants to pray about, you know, I, I, I would just, listen to me. I want to pray a breakthrough prayer for you. All I wanted to do, just honor the prophet and believe. It says, believe the Lord your God. So shall it be established. It said, believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. Just believe that this messenger has been sent to me. Don't even see me as a pastor. See me as a postman. That I came with Paso to you. With your name written on it. Loyin written on it. With your name written on it. Victoria written on it. John Smith written on it. I want you to believe that. And that Paso contains something you have been praying about. That Paso contains something you've been praying about. You know the biggest thing for me when I have all this kind of meeting is to know that he sent me. Because if he sent me, there's nothing beyond the one that sent me. You don't understand? If the, if the United Kingdom sends you to Nigeria, there's nothing that Jagome can do to you. No matter how much you misbehave. Because the people that sent you, they are beyond them. They, okay, so they saw cocaine in your drug. They said we've arrested your ambassador. Ambassador where? You know, it's the UK can, that can arrest a Nigerian ambassador. But the Nigeria cannot arrest a UK ambassador. How? They will not even call. The thought is an abomination. Thank you, Lord. So, will you receive it right now as we pray? Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Le Monte Vredesh. Just play the keyboard loud. Play the jobs here. Yeah. Just go ahead and tell, tell the Lord that you are here. Lift your expectation up to heaven. Lift your expectation up to heaven. Sit. Sit. Pastor G. Just pray. Just pray. Pastor G, come. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, power of the Holy Ghost, thou spirit of infirmity, go now, now, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, for the restore by the power of God. Even now. Lord and right now every desire is a wish that confirmed the word of his servants and the counsel of his messenger every desire you have come here with receive it today as a miracle go back with the testimony you have desired back with the help you have sought for receive the response you have always desired in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ move from glory and testimonies to testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ thank you heavenly father if you believe you receive it shout I receive it go ahead and thank him everybody bless his holy name